Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to APC webinar series. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm Sean, APC Sports Manager. I'd like to also welcome today's speaker, Mr. Tyler Anderson. He has been working for World, uh, World Shooting Para Sports for many years as Sports Manager. And Mr. Tyler, uh, we are glad to have you today and ready to listen how we start a shooting para sports program in our region from basic information to equipment. Um, before we get started, <clears throat> sorry, I have two things to um, announce. First, please uh, mute your microphone during the presentation so that everyone will not be interrupted by noise from you. And for questions at the end of the session, we will have a Q&A time. Also, you can ask your question anytime in the chat window, then I will follow up. And also don't forget to leave your full name in English and an email address so that we can publish your certification accordingly. So uh, without further ado, uh, Tyler, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Sean and, and APC for organizing this. I think it's, it's such a great initiative and, and we're really happy to, to speak to the members directly. Firstly, I, I would like to show that for, um, there's some translation here on the bottom of the screen. So hopefully that helps if, if I'm speaking too quickly or not clearly, you can also read with me. Uh, so today we'll talk about, about starting a shooting parasport program in Asia. Uh, and, and I just would like to say from the, from the beginning that we're very open. Um, Barrett, my colleague, and I are, are really willing to work with you on an individual basis and help you and in your specific country to help make your program as successful as it can be. So just want to say... We'll provide contact details at the end, but we are always available and don't hesitate to, to contact us if you have any questions. So based some basic info about shooting Parasport. You can see started in 1984. We've been at every game since Rio 2016. Uh, I think a surprising thing for most people is that shooting is actually the eighth largest sport in terms of number of quota for the Paralympic Games of, of the 21 sports. So it's a very large sport. We have 78 NPCs currently and 21 in Asia, and we are on the Asian Para Games program. Uh, so this is something that, uh, that for the Asian, Asian region I know is, is very important, and we're very happy and, and proud to be a part of that program. So here is, here is our sport. Um, in the green, you have the Paralympic events, and in the red, you have the events that we look to add in the future. So you'll see in, in the Paralympic events, at the end of each event, there's SH1 and SH2. We have two separate sport classes. Um, SH1 in pistol is an impairment in the upper or lower limb um, or body where they shoot one arm unsupported. So it's exactly the same as, as able body pistol in that sense. Um, and then in rifle, we have SH1, which in very simple terms is that the athlete can fully support the weight of the rifle with their upper limbs. And in the SH2 events, the athletes use a spring because they're unable to fully support the weight of the rifle with their upper limbs. Um, so, of the 10 eligible impairments in the Paralympic movement, shooting has eight of them. Uh, we, we have a very wide range of impairment types in our sport. We don't have intellectual impairment and we don't have short stature, but all of the other eligible impairments, you're eligible to shoot um, in shooting Parasport. And we'll get into rifle and pistol a little bit later. But focusing on some of our developmental events that we look to add in the future, we just started Paratrap in 2018. It's shotgun. Um, it's very exciting for us. It's, it's much different than the rifle pistol side, which is much more calm and relaxed, where shotgun is very fast, quick, boom, bang, it's loud. Uh, so it's, it's very exciting for us to add. 
and also the sport of, of VI, vision impaired shooting. Um, we have a video I can either play at the end or I'll share with Sean and he can distribute that explains VI shooting further, uh, but we're very happy to add vision impaired athletes to our, to our sport family here in shooting. You'll see I've, I've highlighted the 10 meter events. That's what I wanna focus on today. Uh, so that's seven Paralympic events plus the two additional VI events we're looking to add. Now we're, we're focusing on 10 meter ranges for development because you don't need to have a shooting range in order to train and compete in 10 meters. Anytime you have a big enough sport hall or large meeting room or any open space that is 10 meters big, you can, you can have targets there and train shooting parasport. 10 meter is, is air rifle and air pistol, which means it's, it's not actually a live bullet. It's, it's compressed air. Uh, so you can shoot it it's safely indoors in spaces. Um, so we really, really promote 10 meters as a starting place um, for new countries looking to get involved with shooting parasport because it's very, it's very versatile. It's very versatile. It can be set up in, in different rain places. It doesn't have to be a shooting range. So I think that's, that's very helpful for, for new countries. Now, this is something that is, is very important for starting your program, but also building your program is your ISSF member federation. In shooting, we are very, very similar to our able body counterparts. We use the same range, the same targets, the same guns, the same equipment, the same referees, same coaches a lot of the time. Um, so we really recommend you finding your, your able body shooting federation in your country because they have the equipment, they have the coaches, they have the knowledge. They're really your perfect resource for, for getting a program started in your country. And if you don't have a shooting parasport program in your country, that's okay. Uh, you still have Barrett and I, and we are, we are very happy to, to help you get started and help your program grow. Uh, alongside that is, is the Asian Shooting Confederation a regional organization for, for hosting shooting events. We're looking to add para into their existing events. So that will be a great, a great source for regional competitions. And another item that is, is very successful and helpful for new and developing countries is to work with neighboring countries. We have, we have many strong, strong programs in Asia. I've listed a few here, China, Korea, Thailand, India, UAE as well has a very strong program. Um, so if you have a country close to you that you can train with, that, that really works well for both countries. You're able to knowledge share with the coaches and, and learn and, and have that, that competing experience, which is not always so easy to get when you have to travel long ways for competitions. So for new athletes, it's, it's perfect. It's, it's really useful for new athletes in new countries as they're getting started. Um, now the equipment, let me get my translation on. Now the equipment, this is, in shooting it's how it works is that it's expensive to start a program, but then once you have the equipment, it's not very expensive to continue training. So there is some upfront costs. So we, we list the targets there. Um, SUS is our, is our official results provider. So they're at all of our World Cups or World Championship or Paralympic game level events. So we certainly suggest them, but there are other options as well. Um, and those, those, they're expensive. They can be around 2000 a target, more or less, Euro, 2000 Euro. Um, and then going into the, the guns I mentioned, air rifle and air pistol, those can range from 1,500 euro to 3,000 for the really top of the line. And what I will say about guns is, is what many clubs or, or new programs do is they, they purchase a few guns, maybe two or three, but then they have six or seven athletes that are training them. The, the guns can, can go across athletes to also help share out that cost. 
And then once the athlete, you know, reaches, reaches a high level, typically they have their own gun that they, that they use specifically. Uh, uh, thank you. But, but to start, yeah, there is, there is some upfront cost, but then once you have the, the equipment, the target, the guns, some of those jackets and pants aren't so expensive, but there is some cost. Once you have that, you have to buy the pellets, which are, are very small little little pellets that you're shooting in, in air events, and they're not very expensive. So everything else you have, and it's just, um, so it's, there's some upfront costs for new programs, which again, work with your, your Able Body Federation um, to see if they have some of the equipment. Maybe you can borrow targets or or guns and things like that until your program gets going and you have the funding to purchase your own. Um, and feel free to contact us if you have any questions on this. Again, we're, we're here to help and, and we're happy to do so. Now, I would like to, let me see if I can share a video real quick. This was from our world championships we had recently in Sydney, Australia. Um, I, I would like to share this video so you can kind of see from an, from an athlete perspective um, the, what, what it means to be a shooting para sport athlete. Uh, so let's start this one. Oh, that, that's my life. <laughs> my whole life now is around my sport. I love just being on the line and being able to take my shots at a calm and collected place. Once you get your equipment sorted, it's all about the mental game. The athletes ready to battle it out for the four three medals. It's the worst sport for a perfectionist because you can never be perfect at it. There's always something to learn. 10.8. Shooting is really, really complex sport. For many people, it seems very easy. You need to be in a good shape uh, physically, but also mental. For shooting, it's so hard mentally to keep on a really high level. What do you like about uh, shooting? Um, I love the precision. I mean, it's everything, it's everything's down to the tiniest little margins, attention to detail and stuff like that. Oh, I nine. like that you had to be concentrated. Sound it makes it loud, but uh, everyone quiet and concentrated and I quite liked it. For me it's a sport that allows me to know myself, to know what are my limits, but I try to superate them always. The world is a very strong challenge. You've really got to be calm. You've got to train and train and train and build up that muscle memory so that when you're shooting, everything becomes natural. The problem that we have is the brain between our ears, you know, what's in our head and it's it's always giving us negative thoughts, putting in these little seeds of doubt, and you've got to battle that. And look at that concentration on both their faces. And that one scene of Shelly, the scene that I'm trying to do, I don't think I'm going to do anything else. This is very easy for me. Oh, that, that's my life. Hey. Yeah, so that's the, the video I wanted to, to share with you there. Um, I did want to to leave some time for questions. Um, if anyone has questions, I'm, I'm happy to, to entertain them and, and also I'm, I'm happy to, to answer any questions anyone has, um, as well as provide more resources. I mentioned we have a video about VI shooting. Um, if you have a strong VI athlete population in your country and, and, uh, so, you know, some of our top athletes mentioned there that shooting's a little different, that it's, it's very much a mental sport. There are some physical aspects, but it's very much, you can't be perfect. And how do you respond to that? Um, so it's, it's quite a unique, unique sport in, in many sense. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to, to open up the floor if, if anyone has any questions. May I say something? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, you can ask your uh, question. Just uh, let us know uh, your name and where you're from and your organization, and then ask your question, please. 
my name is JP Nortia. So embarrassing, but I'm sorry. What's your name? Huh? Yeah. Okay, Thank I'll you. start again. Uh, my name is JP Nortia. I'm a chairperson for uh, STC shooting in NPC India. I'm chief coach also. So uh, nowadays, due to the COVID uh, 19, uh, we are organizing uh, a few in uh, online competitions. So uh, my question to Tyler uh, that uh, can we conduct international online competition too with your help? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, JP. We absolutely can. We've we've run a couple online competitions now um, during coronavirus times as well. Uh, we have another one starting next month in November. But it, yeah, JP, please please send me the information, and we'd be happy to advertise that uh, to our membership and. And keep keep athletes involved in training, training during coronavirus. Absolutely, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, JP. Okay, um, I see. Uh, probably Iran MPC uh, has a question because uh, you raised your hand. Iran MPC, you have a question to ask. Nope, you don't have any question. Okay, um, anyone, uh, you can ask your any question to Mr. Tyler Anderson. This is an opportunity. Um, while um, you're taking your time to think about your uh, question, if I may, I uh, have uh, one question uh, for Tyler that you presented us the. Uh... Sorry, Sean. Sean, we lost. We lost you there. You, you went on mute. Okay. Sorry. Uh, is it working now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my question, well, is uh, about the um, VI um, event that mm -hmm. you presented uh, during this, uh, your presentation. It would be um, interesting to know more about the, um, the event for visual impairment athletes. Mm -hmm. And also if you can, uh, you can um, play some video that we can have some more um, understanding mm -hmm how this uh, work and, you know, it's quite uh, interesting for me, actually, how uh, the visual impairment athlete can shoot on the, uh, on their target and, you know, those mm -hmm. things. Yeah, it's very interesting to me. Yeah, great. I mean, I think we have a little time here and if there's more questions, I can, of course, take those after the call as well. People can email me. So yeah, I'm happy to play. Here's a little video explaining VI shooting and, and how it works. We are shooting not with the eyes, where we are shooting with, with the ears. I am a shooter, I am a shooter and developer. I heard uh, from the IPC that we need new aiming devices. I make a new aiming device uh, and at the moment uh, this aiming device is in uh, 16, uh, 16 uh, nations. Uh, shooters shoot with this aiming device. A very small device on top of their rifle which then will pick up this green light and a little centre above it and it gives them the pitch of sound so they can shoot into the centre of the target. Well, a loader for the VR shooters are actually assistants. They are 
are helping the shooter to be in the right position and that they are aiming at the right uh, target because they cannot see the target, they just uh, have to listen to the audio in the air. So yeah, that's that's a that's a video explaining VI shooting a little bit further. It's 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 very impressive how accurate they can be, and with just I've tried it by just the pitch. It's it's really impressive um, what they can do with VI. So yeah, there's there's questions there, and we have two service providers for those aiming device equipments. They're both listed on our website, uh, but feel free to contact me as well, and I'm happy to provide you there their contact for those devices. Thank you. Thank you for your info. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, uh, the Hangzhou Asian Paragame Organizing Committee and they have a question for Mr. Tyler. Mm -hmm. uh, Hepco, you can ask your question. Uh, hello, can you, hear? can you hear us? Yep. Okay, our question is about the uh, air rifle standing. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the well the rifle rock uh, provided by the uh, organizing committee or the uh, athletes will take them by themselves. Um, yeah, was it regarding the the VI shooting or the the air rifle standing? I'm not sure, but regardless, the, the athletes provide provide all of their equipment. Um, from the organizer's perspective, you don't need to provide any of the of the the specific chairs or tables or the VI aiming device. Even the athletes provide all of that, so we just need the range. Yeah. Okay. Hi, also. So thank you. That's all. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, Heko. More question from Heko. No. Um, audience, any question for Mr. Tyler regarding Tara shooting? Uh, hello, hello. We have one more question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, is there anything special for uh, Paralympic athletes uh, compared with the normal shooting games? Uh, is there anything uh, should the organizing committee prepare for the shooting sport? No, no. There's, there's really not. Uh, I mean, obviously, accessibility. Is something that is is specific to us versus able body, but otherwise everything is the exact same um, between between able body and para. One thing to keep in mind is that at the front of the firing line, some shooting ranges will put fixed benches or or fixed um, the tables that the athlete use to put their equipment on. Um, it's much better if those are movable, like boxes, for example. Um, for, for, for moving around and, and for example, in the 25 meter event, you have to start at the ready position. And sometimes if an athlete is seated, those tables are too high. Um, so that's, that's really the only thing, um, but no, otherwise it's, we we're very lucky to follow the able body spirit so closely. Does that, does that answer your question, I hope? Uh, uh, is, the, uh, is the athletes uh, will take the, uh, the balance detector? Sorry, sorry, say again? Mm. Was kind of a uh, yeah, it's uh, about a balance yeah, detector a to check the balance of the uh, of the gun. Check the balance of the gun. Uh, you have this showed it. in the video. Ah. Okay, I think maybe you're talking about the spring that the athletes rest their rifle on. 
Um, that is that is provided by the athlete. Um, in terms of equipment control, where we check all of the equipment to make sure it's it's okay, we use all of the ISSS equipment, but there is one additional piece of of an SH2 test set um, that we can we can discuss. It's it's not very expensive to purchase that. So there's just one separate piece of of para specific equipment. Otherwise, the rest is we use all of the ISSF equipment. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, if uh, if you don't have any um question, then I'll go to Mr. Shun. Uh, first, uh, Shun, you can ask your question. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sean, and uh, thank you, uh, Taya, for your presentation. Uh, I have a question regarding the VI class classification. Uh, is it the same regulation with uh, IBSA classification like a BI, BI, B, B1, B2, B3, or you make an original one, or is it uh, only for the blind acid? Or no? Thank you. Yeah, that's that's a very good question. Um, Actually, shooting is the first sport to have a sport-specific classification for VI. So we do use IBSA classifiers um, and the IPC classifiers, but we have a sport-specific, um, I guess, minimum impairment criteria for VI. Uh, th those can be seen in our, in our classification rules online. Um, if you have any questions, happy to answer those. But we do have a sport-specific uh, VI classification. Okay, thank you. Okay. Good question. Okay, then I go to um, Dawa Raham. You can ask your question, please. If you raise your hand to ask a question, Dawa. <laughs> Yeah. There you Hello. Go. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, good afternoon, everyone. I, on behalf of uh, uh, President and the uh, General Secretary of Bhutan Shooting Federation, would like to extend our warm reg uh, get, uh, regards to all the participants out here. Uh, I'm Dawal Ham, and currently I'm serving as the parachuter, parachuter coach. Hello? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Just um, continue. My, uh, my question, my uh, question is, my concern is, so uh, we are prepared for the 2021 for the 20 uh, Tokyo 2021, but due to uh, uh, COVID COVID 19 uh, pandemic, we didn't uh, participate in the uh, qualification any qualification. So, is is there on uh, any online uh, competition uh, qualification competition? Yeah, um, the, the answer is, is no, we, we do not have any online qualification. Online competitions are, are for training. They're not a, an officially certified uh, competition from WSPS. So MQS scores cannot be achieved. We are still planning our, our last direct quota allocation event in Lima in May of 2021. So there is still that, that last chance to earn quota. And of course we will also have the bipartite application process. So um, we understand it's, it's been a difficult year with coronavirus for everyone. And, and we will of course take that into consideration when looking at applications. But um, if your athlete has been training and competing, feel free to, to submit that application and submit the scores. And, and we'll, of course, review everything and take into consideration 
coronavirus and, and, and all those factors when reviewing those applications. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, MPC Bhutan. Yes, yes, please, sir. Yeah, please ask your Hi, question. Sir. How are you? I'm doing good, thank uh, you. How are you? My question is in line with the question asked by one of my coach. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to know, you, like she mentioned, uh, due to this pandemic, we were not able to participate in most of the qualification competitions, mm -hmm. thereby not enabling us to uh, I think not being able to participate in the Togo 2020 Paralympic Games. Now, my question to you is, uh, as far as uh, we, we can see through the competition schedule, most of the competitions were held in European countries. So there is firstly the pandemic, and secondly, due to other, other logistical issues, it is sometimes difficult for us to attend. So my question to you is, is it possible to have similar qualification rounds in the Asian region so that it would be easy for us to attend? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's a great question um, and a fair question. And for one thing that that we did during our qualification process to to Tokyo 2020 was we had five direct quota all allocation competitions, and we had one in every region. We had the World Championships in Korea, we had World Championships in Australia, World Cup in Europe, World Cup in Americas, um, and a World Cup in UAE. So. So we were very we were very aware of spreading out those competitions across all regions, um, and we understand that in 2021 it is it is more difficult um, in terms of competitions more focused in Europe. Uh, but we're we're always accepting applications, especially for our level one, which can count as MQS score for Tokyo 2020. And it's, it's these level one events are not as expensive to organize for LOCs. So we invite any and all countries from Asia to consider hosting a level one competition to make that travel um, less, less difficult. And, and we are working on World Cups in Asia uh, beginning in 2022 as well. So, so I, I understand your question and I, I very much appreciate it and I, I, I can tell you that we're mindful of, of the travel expense and, and making sure that we spread out our competitions around the world. Thank you, Tyler, and thank you, Sean, for this wonderful platform. Thank you. Um, okay, we have um, one more question from Mr. Jassir Nurman. Uh, do you have a plan to develop and support the um, countries who want to start uh, parachuting? Yeah, yeah, we, um, sorry, one second here. Y yes, we, I mean, this is, is part of the plan here is this, this presentation to, to show you how to get started and how to be involved. And we're, like I mentioned, we're, I'm 100% committed to, to helping new countries and developing countries on, on how to start from, get from the very bottom to here and then from here to here. So we're very committed. Um, there are occasional funding opportunities where, you know, programs like the Aguitos Foundation, where we can look to develop in, in new countries. Um, this is not been consistent so i can't say that we will always have this money um, but that may be an option in the asian region in the future as well and of course npcs are able to apply for agitos funding and and work on on shooting parasport programs as well so um, yeah i think the answer is is yes we we are working on development in asia and um, it's it's a work in progress that we're continuing to to try to monitor and and make better and we're, we welcome your feedback and your thoughts on, on how we can help your program and, and help the region of Asia improve. Yep, um, anyone, uh, any question for Mr. Tyler? Well, I just uh, wanted to ask one uh, more question to uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tyler regarding the um, 
the event calendar for 2021, mm -hmm. that also it became uh, the concern of uh, many uh, MPCs to uh, achieving the MQS uh, for um, Tokyo Paralympic Games. Mm -hmm. So we are um, <clears throat> quite uh, looking forward to know what event will be um, held uh, in next year, uh, not only for the um, MQS uh, the, uh, achieving game, but uh, in general, any um, competition that the athlete can participate in. in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, good question. So this is the list of competitions. You can see the competitions here on the page. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, perfect, great. Um, so these are the competitions we have planned so far for next year. Um, you will see we have a World Cup in, in UAE um, in March of next year. And that can be achieved for MQS. And, and uh, you know, I think one thing that I've, I've tried to do since starting here is to have more level one competitions, um, such as this international shooting competition of Hanover um, you see here. Uh, we haven't had very many level one competitions in Asia. We've had um, one in Indonesia, but it's, it's something that I would be very interested to have more of and I think would, would benefit us and more importantly benefit you, our members and the athletes. Um, so for example, your, your national championships, you can make that a level one competition. And, and we only require three World Shooting Parasport officials, all regional um, at that event. So it's, it's not very expensive to sanction it. We have 100 euro sanctioning fee. Um, so it's not very expensive, and I think it really benefits the member countries of Asia to have more of those competitions. So, so we strongly encourage you um, to, to look at your able body federations, what events they're having. It's very easy if there's an able body event to add para to that event. Um, that keeps the cost lower for, for everyone involved. So um, you know, we, we, are, we are aware that we would like to have more competitions in Asia. It can be a challenge to find the right venue to hold those competitions. But like I said, I think these level one competitions are, are a really great option. And we encourage you to, to explore the possibility of, of hosting those events where you can achieve the MQS um, for Paralympic Games and, and World Championships. Okay, um, any question from audience? I don't see there are more questions for Mr. Tyler. Okay, I think uh, this is uh, all for today. Mm -hmm. um, thank you everyone once again. Um, hope to see you uh, soon until uh, the time. Please take care of yourself and take care of each other. Okay. And also, if you have any question after um, this session uh, to Tyler, you can always um, contact him directly, or you can also contact me. Then I will pass any uh, inquiries and questions to uh, Mr. Tyler Anderson and make sure you will get. Uh, what you require for your um, other activities. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sean. And, and thank you, everyone. I look forward to, to working with you to grow the shooting parasport programs in Asia. We're really looking forward to strong programs and the new programs such as Indonesia, who just started and qualified for Tokyo. Very excited about that. So yeah, we're very happy and excited to be in Asia and look forward to continuing our progress there. And thank you to Sean and the APC for, for this platform and organizing this. We really appreciate it. Okay. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to say goodbye and have a good day and see you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Tyler.